Hey, what's going on guys? This is Halo3 Productions here, and today I'm going to show you how to install Windows 7 on your computer. Um, the only thing you'll need is your Windows 7 disk and a legitimate product key, and um, you're ready to go. Um, also, another consideration is if your computer can run Windows 7, um, I would consider most computers today um, could probably run Windows 7, like newer ones, but if you happen to have a one that's probably older than five years or so, um, may not be able to run it very well. Um, I guess the minimum requirements would be a one gigahertz processor and a gig of RAM, as well as 20 gig hard drive. 64-bit um, uh, requirements would be just a little bit more. Um, but I would assume most computers can, you know, handle that today. Um, if you happen to want to run, you know, on a system that barely meets their requirements, um, you can run it, but it won't run very well at all. You know, it'll barely be able to run Windows 7 and nothing else. So I definitely recommend that you, you know, get something better or just, you know, you're kind of stuck with what you have, like, you know, Windows XP or whatnot, which it's not necessarily a bad thing. But um, basically what we're going to do today is we're going to do a clean installation. means that, like, it would just do a, you know, it would wipe out the current operating system or, you know, it would be a, a computer with no operating system. Um, as for upgrades, um... I'll talk about that a little bit, you know, or I'll talk about it a little after we do the clean installation here. Um, so basically what you want to do is you'd want to, you know, restart your computer and put the disk in, um, as I'll do right now. I'll be doing it on a, a VM workstation. So um, I'm going to turn it on. And they go right into the BIOS, just hit F2 when you first start up your computer, or F1, or Escape, or Delete. Um, if you're already aware of this, you know, set in your boot order uh, to CD first, or DVD first, so that your computer will see this, the CD or DVD when it initially starts up. If you already have all that covered, then just skip what I'm going to do right now, but I'm basically just confirming that CD and DVD is the first thing on the list, or, you know what I mean, it allows you to boot to the DVD when you first turn on your computers to just, would go through these menus here, you go to the right, at least for this one. All BIOSes tend to be a little different, but look for like a boot area. You know, like you can change the boot settings. Um, and as we see right here, I have it set, you know, not really that big of an issue, but um, it's just CD-ROM, removable devices, hard drive, and then network, so I'm all set up. <coughs> so then you would just hit exit, save and changes, hit yes. And now that you have your DVD in, it should show you this. And you just hit enter, or any key. So now Windows will load the files needed to uh, run the setup. All right, then it'll prompt you with this first. Um, if, I mean, for most people, I would assume you'd leave this the same, otherwise, you know, change it to the, you know, you know the appropriate, you know, whatever goes for you, but, you know, for me, I'm gonna leave it the same, hit next, and then hit install now. All right, then uh, just accept the licensing terms. And then here would be your two options if we were gonna, when we're gonna talk about upgrade, um, upgrading, um, you would click custom advanced since we're doing a fresh install. Um, well, I, I've been messing around with this virtual machine before, but um, considering that this one is the biggest drive and you, know, you would probably only see one. So I'm just gonna click right here Click next. Must have already installed Windows on this, but I'm just gonna hit okay anyway. Um, if you happen to be overwriting, um, let's say you have Windows XP, um, and incidentally, you can't upgrade from uh, Windows XP to Windows 7 directly. Um, but um, let's just say you wanted to, you know, just do a clean install over Windows XP. 
Um, what it'll do is when you're installing, you're not if you don't format the drive, you just simply install right over. It'll take the the whole Windows XP installation. It'll change. It'll put it in one folder and call it Windows.old, and then it'll create a new uh, folder called Windows. You know that's where the Windows installation directory is. You know in your computer, all the critical files and whatnot. So all your existing files are put in Windows.old, and you can browse through the directory and go to your desktop and your your My Documents folder and all the different folders. So your files will still all be there, but of course, if you were going to do that, I'd still recommend backing it up just in case for some magical reason your files weren't there. But that's generally what happens when you install, you know, literally directly install over an existing Windows installation. So this part will probably take 15 to 20 minutes, depending on your computer. Maybe it may take longer. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop the recording and then just wait till it's done and I'll start it back up so that it'll, you know, there's no point in recording all of this. It just should, it should just simply go through all of this and then restart, you know, and basically when there's an important prompt that I, you know, I need to walk you through again, you know, I will show it. So anyway, well, <coughs> I'll come back when this is, uh, when this is finished. All right, we're back. Um, this will be the next screen that you'll see after we left. Um, it basically just tells you to type in a username. Let's type in user. As you notice down here, it'll automatically populate this area, user-pc. Um, you can just change that to, you know, Windows 7 or whatever. Actually, you can't, and brings up this, actually, I put a space in. Uh, can't contain any of the following characters, including the space. So you can you can put dashes that would fill in, a, you know, fill those in a space. But other than that, um, that's what you, you type in there. <coughs> um, typing in a password and a password hint that's if you want to um, firstly for my background and my security background I would recommend it but um, even for most time I don't even have one myself but um, yeah of course you type in your product key here if you want to activate Windows now um, if you're connected to the internet um, Right now, I don't really need to enter the product key since you'll get. A, I think you get a 30-day grace period. You could just, you know, keep using Windows, and at the end of the 30 days, it'll uh, lock you out of your computer. So, you know, after you you install Windows, if you don't have your product key on you at the moment, definitely would recommend activating it, or if you have other means of activating Windows. Um, of course, here, these recommended settings: install important updates only. Ask me later. This is just for Windows updates. For us with legitimate copies of Windows, we would click this. For you who do not have legitimate copies, we would click this. But um, considering you're using a legitimate copy, we would click use recommended setting. Of course, here I would just choose central time, saying that's where I am located. Um, next. And then here is where you select your computer's current location, home, work, public. From I would but for most, 95% of people, it's going to be home. Um, if you happen to be at a workplace with a domain, you would want to click here. It's all about your computer being discoverable on a network um, and the different sharing options that'll be that'll be uh, authorized. I mean, you can obviously change them, but I would like to almost consider they're like presets. Of course, if you um, are in a public network, let's say you steal internet from the nearest airport or McDonald's, I would definitely click this because then your computer won't be discoverable on a network you know, and whatnot. <coughs> but for me, I'm going to click home. And then it'll connect to my network and apply the settings as it says. Um, yeah. And then it'll just simply finalize everything. And then it'll just set up your desktop. And then you'll be at the then you will be at the desktop then. All right, so now you've successfully installed Windows. 
Um, the only thing left that I would do is obviously post installation tasks such as like installing applications and making sure drivers and whatnot are installed, um, like all of them that are installed correctly. Um, you would just click start, computer, um, manage, device manager. And considering it's a virtual machine, I generally don't have a problem with um, drivers, but it tells me that a, a base system device, like an unknown device um, and a multimedia audio controller, which is sound card, is not installed. So then that way, you know, with a normal PC, you would just, you know, use the disk that you that came with your computer or look, you know, go online to whatever manufacturer, you know, say you built your computer or, you know, wherever you bought it, you know, check it out. Like it say at Dell.com, check their website for updated drivers for Windows 7 and whatnot. Um, <coughs> which leads me to talk about upgrade a little bit. Um, if you're upgrading to uh, Windows 7, I alluded to this a little earlier about Windows XP. You cannot directly upgrade from Windows XP to Windows 7. Um, how you would start an upgrade, you would stick the disk in while at Windows XP, and you would come up and you'd hit Run Setup. Um, I mean, it won't work, but this is the way you would normally do it. Um, with Windows XP or Windows, Windows Vista, you would just put the CD in and, and run, the, run the upgrade um, from the CD, and then it'll just take over from there and basically do very, very, very similar things that I showed here. They're not really any different. But, um, you, yeah, like I said, you can't upgrade from Windows XP to Windows 7. You'd have to do a clean installation like we did here in order to do it. Um, there is one other way. You could upgrade from Windows XP to Windows Vista, and then upgrade from Windows Vista to Windows 7 to like bridge the gap. That is, if you have Windows Vista, like a Windows Vista product key in the Windows Vista like um, CD, and of course then you would have to upgrade appropriately. Like I don't think you can upgrade from Windows XP Professional to Windows Vista Home Premium. It's like upgrading from a, a better version to a worse version. Like it would have to be Home Windows XP Home Edition to Windows X Windows Vista Home Premium. Um, and as well as, you know, you couldn't upgrade from a 32-bit to a 64-bit or a 64 to a 32. Um, won't be really the case with, with Windows XP very much. Um, but, um, <coughs> so you'd have to, you know, like I said, you have to upgrade from XP to Vista and Vista to 7. As for upgrading to, uh, from Vista to 7, just stick, the CD, just stick the DVD in, click Upgrade, and then follow the prompts, very similar to what we did here. So, and then also, before running anything for upgrading um, there is the Windows 7 upgrade advisor I'm not really gonna do much with it here but I'll put a link in the description for it you can run it on XP Vista I mean any operating system I believe and then it'll do run some checks and check your hardware and whatnot just to let you know um, if your computer is is gonna work um, especially with like certain I think applications or it'll it'll tell you if there's known issues with drivers and whatnot or it'll, it'll give you it basically give you a nice rundown um, if you should or if you shouldn't um, upgrade or do a clean install, it'll, it'll kind of give you, it'll kind of help guide you along the way. So using Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor is definitely a good thing to do um, to check out if you're if you can really upgrade or not. If you'll if you'll have any problems in the future, and, and by doing that, I definitely would, yeah, I definitely would recommend it so you don't have problems, you know, later on. Um, as well as um, if you're going to do a clean installation, do make sure you back up your data. Make sure you do back it up. Um, because don't rely on the Windows that old fully, like I mentioned before, when you do like a clean installation over like Windows XP or Windows Vista, um, yeah, make sure you back up your crap. So other than that, if you, if there's something I didn't cover here, or there's other questions that you have, just leave a comment below or send me a private message. So hopefully it helped and thanks for watching.